Marquez for today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. We'll be talking about the current significance of actions started 50 years ago as some far-sighted folks gathered to sign the charter for the United Nations. We'll look at what the United Nations has meant in the lives of two Austin citizens in just a moment. Stay with us. This is Austin Faith Dialogue, a public affairs program discussing the important crossroad of religion in life, produced by Austin Metropolitan Ministries in cooperation with KTBC-TV. Austin Faith Dialogue highlights the interaction of the religious community with the social and cultural issues throughout our area. Now, today's edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. We're glad you joined us today for our conversation with two people from Austin. I'm Sandy Wilder, your host today, and we have with us Carol Colsty, State President of Church Women United, and Frank Cooksey, the President of the United Nations Association here in Austin. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. And we're talking about, in a sense, local to global. So, Carol, let me ask you first. Um, how have you gotten involved with United Nations activities? What significant thing has happened to you? I went to the NGO forum in Beijing, China, just last month. As a child, growing up in North America, of course, I was told that if I dug a hole straight down through the earth, I would come up in China. And this was always uh, a mystery to me. You know, What would happen if I did go to China, whether I dug a hole or went by Boeing 747? And I had the chance, Church Women United announced about a year ago that they would be having a delegation to the NGO forum and that it, uh, among our delegation would be two official observers to the United Nations Conference on Women, the fourth such conference. Ten years ago there was one in Nairobi, Kenya, and it was decided then that there was going to be another one. And we think perhaps as a result of what happened in Beijing, there might be another one. Mm, we certainly hope so, and we'll get back to your experiences there in just okay. a minute. And Frank, you've been involved at the local level, but quite visibly in the United Nations Association. Where did that um, interest spring from? I've always had an interest in international affairs and international relations. Uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote a letter to the United Nations Association uh, office in New York the national office after I had gotten a uh, piece in the mail about the United Nations Association and asked if there was an Austin chapter at that time they told me there was a chapter but that it was rather dormant and not doing too much right now and uh, at that point several of us reactivated the chapter and have uh, been building it into a viable a strong local organization in Austin. Good. I'm, I'm glad we have that kind of presence. And Carol, going back to your experience in Beijing, you went to the non-governmental organizations forum, the That's NGO right. forum, mm -hmm. and you were gone for about eight days or so. What were some of the thoughts going through your mind as you prepared for this gathering? Well, I knew that it was going to be an educational experience because about 200 workshops were going to be offered at the uh, site, which was in about 40 miles north of Beijing in a community called Huai Ro. And we had to go by bus every day to the site. But I was uh, excited about having women from all over the world there in their own delegations and doing workshops on all those subjects. And I just wondered what I was going to be experiencing in those workshops. And then I was uh, hoping to be able to support our delegates to the Conference on Women and to, as I said, our General Director and our Vice President of Church Women United in the USA were official observers. And yes, we did support them. They reported back to us nightly while they were attending the conference, while we were uh, winding up our experience with the NGO Forum. Well, evidently these workshops were, were quite significant then. What were they on? What were some of the topics? Oh, a whole range of topics the girl child issue, uh, population, uh, nutrition, uh, family uh, organization, um, anything that uh, you can think of was in the book and each day we had to decide what our agenda would be for the next day. Must have been some hard decisions. Oh, it was. <laughs> and, and those kinds of issues, I'm sure, are ones that you, the United Nations has dealt with throughout its, its history. Maybe you can say something about uh, the purposes of the United Nations as an organization. 
Well, the United Nations was formed, of course, uh, right after, or actually during, the latter stages of World War II. And the uh, President of the United States at that time, Franklin Roosevelt, was determined that we would have an organization in the world to deal with matters of international peace and security. And the basic purpose of the United Nations is to promote that kind of peace and security in the world. In fact, let me just read to for you just real briefly a mm -hmm. uh, section of the charter, which I think is significant. It says uh, the purpose of uh, one of the purposes of the United Nations is to maintain international peace and security and to that end to take effective collective measures for the prevention and removal of threats to the peace and for suppression of acts of aggression or other breaches of the peace and to bring about by peaceful means and in conformity with international justice and law adjustment or settlement of international disputes or situations which might lead to a breach of the peace. So that is one of the primary purposes of the United Nations. And uh, in addition to that, of course, we, the United Nations has a lot of cooperative ventures, 185 nations of the world, cooperating in the areas of health and uh, labor problems and development and environmental problems, population problems, and uh, all kinds of issues that nations of the world are concerned with. Well, Sandy, the um, main themes of the Women's Conference were development, peace, and equality, but the Chinese people in their banners greeting us as we came to the site was, and friendship. And it was a very uh, hospitable situation. Uh, they were they were ready for us and they wanted this to be an, a significant experience they knew that uh, the United Nations needed to have this conference and they were willing to provide the site and uh, of course the theme of it is looking at the world through women's eyes so they were wondering what it was going to be like to have 40,000 women descend upon Beijing and Huayro um, the uh, the route that we took to get out there each day was lined with flags and and wonderful slogans like uh, be a, a gracious host to the conference and uh, um, they made it as, as comfortable as possible. Of course it rained, we were between two typhoons but mm -hmm. it was an exercise in coping as well and, and each of us did our own way probably of would've, coping. <laughs> right, probably would have been in any place. Yes. In, throughout the conversation so far I, I hear talk of um, cooperation and peace and perhaps nonviolence friendship I'm I'm wondering um, since both of you individually are are people of faith where do you see the intersection between your United Nations experiences and your faith backgrounds um, say Church Women United or, or your local church involvement well of course uh, the theme of the United Nations are tied very closely to religious themes and particularly to ethical themes within the uh, primary faiths here in this this country uh, the theme of love thy neighbor as thyself and who is your neighbor is a very primary issue in the Christian faith the theme uh, in, in the Jewish faith of doing justice and loving mercy and walking humbly before your God is um, a theme that I think ties in real well with the theme of the United Nations. Uh, the whole stress upon working together instead of just being separated, working alone in the world is, is I think a very, very important theme and it's being, frankly, it's being challenged right now uh, by some in this country. But uh, it's something that we need to get back to and to really commit ourselves to. Mm -hmm. This came out also in the forums, in the workshops, because a lot of the issues that were being discussed were out of religious uh, convictions, a mm -hmm. foundation of wanting the uh, best for uh, children and families. And uh, the implications are that, of course, the 
platform for action which came out of the conference on women is a platform for us to implement within our own countries to uh, try to influence those who have the uh, the power to make laws and to enforce laws which make it possible for children to grow up in a healthy atmosphere and uh, a lot of these as i said come out of religious conviction so that when we had some discussions we had Islamic and Buddhist and Sikh and Christian and, and Jewish women discussing these issues, we realize that, of course, the conference is not a religious event, but a lot of the uh, discussion and the thought and the uh, underpinning comes from religious convictions from many parts of the, uh, the, the believing world. So it, it sounds as if the United Nations um, could perhaps in, in the best sense be a place where we we try to live out our religious convictions in an arena that is not necessarily predisposed toward that true good good ecumenical and i think that was one of the things i learned that as a, a christian i'm in a in a minority in the world but that the christian uh, beliefs are uh, important for us to to express in a world where there are going to be some other religious beliefs being expressed too Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's important that they be uh, said, and uh, I think it's important that uh, Hillary Clinton came and uh, enforced these things that were being said and things that had to be said, especially in a place where a lot of these human rights and women's rights are being uh, uh, denied. And I think the Chinese women appreciated our being there and raising this is issue because they have trouble raising it, um, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's very important to them. And, they wanted us to know what the implications are of some of the uh, uh, oppressive laws that they are living under. Well then, how, how might that, that concern um, for, for human rights translate into, say, some of the program or emphasis of the local association? Well, what we've tried to do in Austin is first to educate people about what the United Nations is. Uh, we have four meetings a year in which we have speakers, uh, presentations to try to focus upon issues that the United Nations is concerned with and also to educate people about the structure of the United Nations, some of the problems that the United Nations has operationally. Uh, our, our organization is not just one to be uh, rubber stamping everything that the mm -hmm. UN does. We, mm -hmm. we stand also at times as a constructive critic of the United Nations. The United Nations is not a perfect organization, but it is a great organization, and it's one that uh, is doing great things in the world. So we try to educate people about what those things are. We've had such speakers as Ray Marshall, former uh, Secretary of Labor, who was on the board of the United Nations Association nationally, uh, Rodolfo de la Garza, who was also uh, on that board. Uh, we've had a in very interesting panel put together by people of the uh, Baha'i uh, tradition, which was a uh, interesting study of family and uh, other kinds of uh, living situations in different parts of the world, uh, to the tr cultural traditions in different parts of the world, which was an interesting program. So those are the some of the kinds of things that we do. Mm -hmm. an, an important piece of the education that goes on in Austin, I know. Yeah. Well, we'll come back in, in just a minute for some further conversation. Uh, take a break right now to help you see a little bit more about the work of Austin Metropolitan Ministries and Austin Faith Dialogue. So stay with us. Serving Austin means serving you. That has always been the primary goal of Austin Metropolitan Ministries. We are religion in action through the work of these organizations. Each plays a key role in making the capital city a better place to live, but we can't do it alone. Do you have some spare time, talents, or any resources that you can share? If you do, please call AMM at 472-7627 because serving Austin means serving you. We're glad to have you for the second part of Austin Faith Dialogue and a lively conversation with Carol Colsty, who is State President of Church Women United, and Frank Cooksey, who's the President of the United Nations Association here in Austin. Uh, Carol, getting back to you, 
I wonder, since you're state president of this organization mm -hmm. and, and you've just been to the conference in, uh, in Beijing, what kind of uh, influence that experience now will have on your work in Church Women United, as well as the work of the organization itself? Okay. Uh, as I begin to tell the story of my personal experience in Beijing, uh, women have already been made more aware of some of the issues that were discussed there. Uh, some of the girl-child issues, the um, domestic abuse issues, uh, not that they haven't heard of them, but having uh, somebody who has actually been there, I talked to some of the Chinese women about these things. I saw the um, bonding between parents and grandparents and their children. They know they're only going to have one child. Mm. And we know that if there are succeeding pregnancies, they are by law to be stopped. And this uh, kind of message from the Chinese women, they say, please tell other people what we're under, that we have no choice in our families. Um, so as I bring this message back to women and we talk about it, they say, I didn't know that was the, ha the, the situation there. Um, the uh, Chinese women are beginning to be able to, to express themselves a little more. And as I said, being there gives them a chance to, to have their message heard. Um, so as uh, women begin to be more aware of these issues and discuss them, uh, they're more aware of what's happening with the United Nations in regard to these issues mm -hmm. and can uh, then implement the platform for action, which have about, has about 10 or 12 points in it, which very much parallel the platform issues that Ch Church Women United has had for years. And that was one of the mission statements for our delegation is that we've been thinking about these issues. Uh, it's not, nothing new to talk about population and family and mm -hmm. um, unemployment and the uh, technological skills of women which allow them to be employed and to support their families um, so that these women are now beginning to talk about these things in a much more realistic way they're not just things that are in the headlines or uh, in the evening news mm -hmm. but real people real situations exactly and perhaps a real influence on the program of church women united then. yes I imagine so mm -hmm. and here here locally um, will these experiences at the NGO forum and at the conference themselves influence somehow the program of the local association? Well, I, th I think that these uh, programs that have been held by the United Nations studying such things as the environment, mm -hmm. population problems, women's issues, the next year in uh, Istanbul, Turkey, the, uh, the program they're going to have, Habitat 2, mm -hmm. which is uh, a study of urban problems throughout the world, problems of cities. These all uh, direct and focus our attention on these issues and give us some insights into how we can approach these issues in our local communities as well as nationally and internationally. So uh, I think that they're very valuable experiences and, and come back to the, for example, Carol has come back to this community and is going to be able to share the insights that, that she gained with women throughout this uh, area and through, you know, the working through the whole uh, community structure that we have dealing with women's issues. And if you were then going to, uh, to speculate on what might happen as a, as a result of the 50th anniversary of, of the United Nations and, and greater attention paid to the work of the UN through conferences like this, what, what influence that might have here on our local United Nations Association, what would you like to see happen? Well, first of all, I would really like for people to be better informed about what the United Nations is. Uh, there are some currents in our country right now people thinking that the UN, for example, is a world government, which it is not. Mm -hmm. It's a association of world governments working together. Mm -hmm. uh, there are concerns in this country about our participation in peacekeeping operations throughout the world. And uh, we need to better understand that the United States has a veto in mm -hmm. the Security Council and does not have to engage in any of these operations unless it's in its national interest to do so. And I think every president of the United States uh, since the creation of the UN has supported the UN and has said that we need to be involved and there have been, there have been many cases where we have used the peacekeeping function of the UN to intervene multilaterally 
working together to try to calm situations in the world, resolve them through negotiation, and on rare occasions, uh, when it's necessary, use force to resist aggression. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a very important part of the UN and has been supported by the United States. So I'd like for people to understand uh, what the UN is, how it, is how it has done its work throughout its history, that's one thing I would like very much uh, for people to, uh, to grasp mm -hmm. what the UN is all about. Also, I would like for people to feel that they have an interest in supporting the United Nations uh, by writing our senators, United States senators and our congressmen, to try to encourage them to pay the United Nations dues that we are behind on right now, for example, and to support the United Nations financially, uh, as we should, through our treaty obligations to the UN. And one of those is the uh, uh, document that has to do with discrimination of women. The United States has not yet ratified that document, and that's one thing we can do is to help the pathway toward ratification of that to indicate our mm -hmm. interest in the fact that some women do have dire discrimination and that's one way we can be very constructive about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some other dreams while you're dreaming out loud here? Well, I, I think that uh, one of the things we're doing in this community is working through the Model United Nations program mm -hmm. to try to educate people who are in the high schools and we, we last year had our first United Nations Model UN program here in Central Texas mm -hmm. and it was very successful. We had uh, eight high schools that participated and uh, this year we have done this again and we're going to have even more students that have already registered than we had last year to participate in this program and it's an opportunity for high school students to learn about the United Nations through a model structure. They model set up UN. A, a mock UN program? Actually? Right. Yes, they it'll be at St. Edward's University again. Yeah, it'll be held this year, uh, I think January 11th and 12th, as I recall, at St. Edward's University, and students can sign up in their local high schools to be involved in this. And it's, it, they, the ones who were involved last year were very enthusiastic about it. They just loved it. Great opportunity for young people. Right. Mm. This was started through uh, part of the Austin Metropolitan Ministries Peace and Justice Program, and uh, uh, we're very proud of that. Good. And also supported by the UN Association at the University of Texas and other surrounding uh, institutions of higher education. Mm. So from its right. founding, it had some ecumenical support then, too. Yes, it had support from the, the uh, local ecumenical organization, Austin Metropolitan Ministries from uh, our association and from the University of Texas uh, students who are participating in Model UN activities as well. And they come from experiences in their own high schools which were very strong with Model United Nations and we're very glad to have them participating and, and doing training of, of students mm -hmm. who are going to be uh, probably going into some careers in this field and uh, we're delighted that they're getting their practice here in Austin. Great, so we can encourage the adults and the youth to join the association and then the youth to participate in the Model UN Conference. Sure. We, we very much hope that people will join our association, become involved in it. Uh, if anybody is interested in contacting me, they can just give me a call at my law office and uh, I'll be glad to talk to them about it. Good. I'm sure you'll be getting lots, yeah. of, lots of calls. I wonder, Carol, as we have a, a few minutes here, what, as you've come back home, has been your greatest impression of China, of the other women you were there with, and, and the significance of this event mm -hmm. on your life? Well, just realizing that the things that I'm uh, thinking are important in my life are also important in the lives of, of women all over the world. They shared that through the workshops. They shared it through the things that they brought uh, to sell, to illustrate their, their culture. This is from the Seychelles Islands. Um, of course, this is from China, and I uh, hesitate to show that this was a symbol of servitude, but it serves as a very nice souvenir. And I did bring a, a quilt uh, back home, which I'm using to illustrate the artistry and the, the culture. Mm -hmm. I did do to some touring. I went to palaces and, and temples and 
saw the biggest bell in China at the Bell Temple and went to the um, Forbidden City and went to the Temple of Seeking Harmony. And then the one beyond that is the Temple of Perfect Harmony where the emperor attempted to have the, um, his, his religious foundation to help him with the affairs of state. And this was back in the 1700s begins to show us then that there are really more similarities than differences. Oh yes, and the us. women of China wanted to be sure that we have that message to be brought back, that uh, uh, they have important things to think about with their families and with their uh, gaining more skills. And our tour guide named Laura wants to come here and become trained as in the tourist industry so that she can go back and have a better job in, in doing that work building some bridges like mm -hmm. uh, like the association does and yeah. as I recall there's going to be uh, a celebration of the United Nations anniversary not too uh, too many days away right right on October the 24th in the evening at First Baptist Church Fellowship Hall we're going to have a local celebration of the 50th anniversary of the founding of the United Nations and we want everybody to come it'll, it'll be a wonderful uh, event and I we're going to have the Austin Boys Choir and a lot of uh, entertainment and uh, some exhibits, I'm sure, including one that Carol will put together on the Women's Conference mm -hmm. and others, uh, showing what the United Nations does. So it'll be a very interesting opportunity for people to learn about the United Nations and uh, really enjoy some multicultural entertainment. Any closing remarks, closing thoughts in our last few seconds here? Well, the Great Wall of China is the only thing that is visible from the moon on the earth. And as you think about that, um, think about the people that, uh, that are not seen from the moon, mm -hmm. but that are here living out their lives, performing the daily tasks. And I think that uh, having the United Nations around for 50 years has made that maybe a little easier. Right. I think my closing thought would be that we all need to recommit ourselves to working together in this world. This world through telecommunications and trade and other things that have occurred over the last few years is one world. And uh, we need to work together in this world rather than trying to go it alone. And the United Nations is a great institution to help us to do that. And it seems then if, if we people of faith can learn to talk with each other and work together across boundaries, how much more um, countries need to, to learn how to do that. Perhaps we can, can lead the way then in that movement. Well, thank you. Let's hope we can do this in another 50 years and see how far we've come then in, in working internationally. Um, we've had Carol Colsty, State President of Church Women United, and Frank Cooksey, who's the President of the United Nations Association here in Austin. We'll have to do this again. And we'll encourage those of you who watch today to search for ways that you can help build bridges also in your faith communities and with people around the world. We hope to see you again next week on your favorite show here, Austin Faith Dialogue. Call Austin Metropolitan Ministries at 472-7600.